In June, myself and Bruno Federico, who is behind the lens, we went to Venezuela uh, to report on what was a, a deepening political crisis. For two months prior, many Venezuelans had been taking to the streets on an almost daily basis to participate in demonstrations that were turning more and more violent every day to protest the state of affairs in, in their country as well as to protest uh, the government of President Nicolas Maduro. Venezuela had been going through a, a, a spiraling crisis, a social and economic crisis already for several years, but it really felt like the country was, was reaching a boiling point. And we felt like it was important to go to Venezuela at that point to understand what Venezuelans who were taking to the streets were demanding and to understand the political crisis that was unfolding. We spoke to protesters who were demanding that President Maduro resign immediately. Others simply wanted the government to address the daily hardships of, of their lives, uh, matters like skyrocketing inflation and food shortages. And we also spoke to others who were uh, particularly fired up about a recent decree of President Maduro to create a constituent assembly which would basically draft a new constitution. And the opposition and protesters feared that a new constitution would simply consolidate government power and give opponents to the government even less political, political space. So we felt like it was important to document what was happening in uh, Venezuela at the time, particularly with these increasingly violent protests in Caracas. By the time we had arrived, there had already been dozens of, of deaths, as well as over 2,500 uh, protesters arrested. Uh, but we also wanted to see how the everyday lives of Venezuelans had changed throughout the deepening of this crisis. It was pretty much exactly a year prior that the Pulitzer Center and PBS NewsHour had sent us to Venezuela to, to report on the crisis. And you could really feel that the situation of Venezuelans had worsened. Uh, prices of everyday goods were far higher. Of course, salaries were not able to, to catch up. There was greater scarcity of food. There was greater scarcity of medicines. Uh, people just seemed more desperate. We witnessed people combing through garbage to find food to eat. We saw that in general people just seemed skinnier and not to be eating uh, so much. And we decided that within our three-part series on Venezuela, we wanted to focus on food shortages and malnutrition. And we found that malnutrition was particularly affecting young children and severe malnutrition was rising in Venezuela at, at a really alarming rate. You'll see our visit with a Venezuelan doctor who specializes in child nutrition and she showed us very distressing scenes of severely malnutritioned babies. We saw babies who were a year old but looked as though they were two months old and were barely hanging on to life. To make matters worse, Venezuela has been experiencing an acute shortage of almost every single kind of medicine. And so we spoke to doctors who were demanding that their government start accepting donations from abroad and other governments to basically create what they called a humanitarian channel of medicines that could be sent to, to Venezuela. We made a visit to a basically ad hoc pharmacy that was run by a local group and citizens, regular volunteers, who were trying to bring medications into the country and distribute them to Venezuelans in need for free. Given the very dire situation in Venezuela, understandably many Venezuelans uh, had been fleeing the country and the final segment of our series focuses on the exodus of Venezuelans. Many of them have been coming over into neighboring Colombia. So we visited the border city of Cucuta where every single day tens of thousands of Venezuelans walk across the bridge that is the border between Venezuela and Colombia. Many of them 
come to Colombia just for the day in order to buy supplies that they cannot get in Venezuela. And others tote huge suitcases behind them and actually try to start a new life for themselves in Colombia. So we visited with several families who were trying to do just that and try to eke out a living starting with almost absolutely nothing and finding that living in Colombia also wasn't easy. We hope that you will check out our three-part series on the PBS NewsHour about Venezuela's deepening social and economic crisis.